Radial Suite Release 8 provides compatibility with Mac OS X 10.7 through Mac OS 10.12 Sierra. Release 8 brings improved processing tools, visualization, data access, and graphical output. The release notes detail many improvements, and this introductory video highlights some of the new features in Release 8's most robust data processing and viewing tools, which are C Display, Spectra Processing and Spectra Plotter Map, Wave Processing, and Wave Display. We also introduce Call Sign. And note that the elements that provide enhanced data access and visualization, including new toolbars, right click menus, keyboard navigation, and PDF graphical output. These also translate um, to Diag Display. In this demonstration, I'll highlight what's new in C Display 8 so you can get started with these features. C Display 8's crisp, clean graphics are supported by export to PDF capability, bringing infinite resolution and report quality graphics. Making a map is now possible in C Display 8, and its upgraded World Database Extraction tool provides quick and easy navigation. Map editing is also built in, so map viewports and map content can be easily modified. Bathymetry is integrated with multiple display options, and radial coverage makes network planning intuitive and instantaneous. These improvements have been included in C Display's general layout, which still consists of pull down menus, a toolbar, and the main dialog window, which is now called the map settings window. Much of this presentation focuses on the map settings window as the biggest additions were made here. The C Display 8 user's guide details the new features highlighted in this video in addition to many others. One of C Display's biggest structural changes is its map making and map editing capabilities. To make a new map, go to File, Create New Map, and this will launch the Map Editing tab inside the Map Settings window. Here we'll jump to San Francisco Bay by holding down the Option key while clicking on the map and drawing a box around the area you want with your mouse. Then you can click on the center of the map and drag, drag it towards the pink crosshairs, that's um, the map origin, and then you can enter a smaller width down in the dialog box and hit return. And this will zoom in further. Scroll up or down to zoom in or out. And when you have the viewport you want, you can save your map in the map settings box. And so here we're using ALCA for Alcatraz Island, which is in San Francisco Bay. Map editing is now available in C Display, and this allows you to make major or minor changes to your existing map and its components without having to make a whole new map. The editing options are accessed in File Modify Map, and this will launch you to the map editing window. Scroll up or down to zoom in or out, and save your file under a different name. You can go to Sites, Map, and Add a Site by clicking the plus key. Double click the X's and enter the name of your site. And then in the map, you can drag it into place with your mouse. You can add other sites the same way. And you can close out of map settings and come back to it later. And changes that you can add later on include pretty much everything. You can highlight a site, click the lock, drag that site to a new location with your mouse, close the lock. You can change the color of the symbol. Here we'll make it yellow. We'll change the appearance of the label. And we'll change its location. Now we'll go to the Attributes tab and enter a couple of parameters. Here we'll enter Frequency and Bandwidth. Then we'll return to the Map tab, slide these labels on, and click Apply to display them for all the sites. And then we'll move the label for Site 2 back to where it was. C Display's new bathymetry feature shows the seafloor depth with shading or with contours. C Display uses the general bathymetric chart of the ocean's database, 
which is generated based on sources assumed to have a datum of mean sea level, except in waters less than 200 meters where datum may vary. You can visit the jebco.net website for more information. If you go to map settings and select the bathymetry tab, you'll see a top region called bathymetry where the shading is managed and a lower region called contours where contours are managed. So starting with the top portion, you can turn the bathymetry data on with the slider. The coloring is adjustable, so I'll change it to blue and I'll subdivide the shading now into eight different depths. To look at shallow water, we'll slide that layer on, leave it set to 20 meters, and increase the transparency. The shallow water feature allows the user to define a depth threshold where any depth equal to or less than this threshold will be shaded in the sea display map. To view bathymetric contours, I'm going to turn all of the shading features off and then toggle the contours on. I'll set the contour range from 0 to 3700 meters and the contour interval to 100 meters. If you want the contours to be more in the background of your map, you can set a lighter color. And you can label them by toggling the label feature on and then dragging your cursor along the lines that you want labeled. You can also adjust the font by clicking on the T button so say you want gray labels in a large font, you can set that here. Radial coverage has been added to sea display so that you can move existing CSONs or add new ones and see the estimated coverage of your network. Coverage is managed in the Map Settings Coverage tab, but first we're going to look at the Sites tab um, and view the attributes. So here I've entered the minimum amount of information required to create a coverage map which consists of the expected range and expected view for each station. So now we go to the coverage tab, toggle the site feature on, and check each site so that its estimated coverage appears on the map. To see an estimated combined coverage area, turn combine on and notice the thick lightly shaded line that outlines this region. If you want to see this coverage only, then turn the site off. Spectra processing has improved handling of rapidly varying currents and interference removal. In addition to enhancing data quality, the updated processing routines run 10 times faster than in prior releases and an offline command line tool makes batch reprocessing more efficient. Spectra plotter map displays two and three dimensional plots of power spectra. Opening a CSS file launches the main window where a new toolbar provides access to all the spectral data. The three buttons in the upper left corner control the plots that appear in the spectra color map. Clicking in the spectra color map adds a cursor or a small black rectangle. And the range slice, Doppler slice, and information windows all track this cursor. I'll show you how to move it with pull down menus and keyboard shortcuts. The menus provide many ways to manipulate the data plots where applicable keyboard shortcuts are shown. The up, down, and left and right arrow keys will move the cursor around all of these windows simultaneously. To remove the cursor, you can use the power menu and uncheck outline selected cell. Adjusting a parameter plotted in more than one window occurs simultaneously. For example, you can adjust the power using the Doppler menu and spread the data for the three antennas so they're easier to read. The zoom menu now provides some additional options with the final option to restore to default settings. The font size is fully adjustable and once you have your images the way you want them, you can use the pull down menu to save to PDF. Radial Suite Release 8 comes with new wave processing, which applies wave outlier filtering and temporal and spatial averaging. Refer to the wave display guide for a brief overview of the new wave processing and refer to the CSOND wave filter guide for details about outlier removal.
The wave processing tool also uses a measured antenna pattern and it can be configured for enclosed bays. Wave files without the new filtering and averaging are still made available. These files reside in the Waves Unfiltered folder. Files that have been filtered but not spatially averaged are in the Waves Ranged folder. And files that have undergone new filtering and spatial averaging are stored directly in the Waves folder. When you import unfiltered, unaveraged Wave files, you can use the single mode to look at wave height, wave period, the wave from direction or the wind from direction, and this hasn't changed. You can also use the multiple mode to view a single wave parameter for different range cells. When you import the new filtered averaged wave files, the single mode is your only option because data across the range cells have been averaged. So regardless of its format, customizing your wave output is enabled through new pull down menu options and keyboard navigation, and I'll walk you through some of these features. The action menu provides a lot of tools for navigating the data and it also gives you the keyboard shortcuts. So here we'll move the data to the left with the pull down menu and then the left arrow key and we can move it back to the right and shift it up and down with the arrow keys. Holding on the option key while pressing the arrows will synchronize navigation for all windows that are open. the action menu, you can change the scale of the data and the font size of the labels, which can also be adjusted with the toolbar. You can activate the marker from the action menu. The marker matches data displays in the lower part of the window. You can click on the marker and drag it across the screen to see data for these parameters for any time step that you want. And you can also toggle it on and off with its toolbar button. Wave Display's new vertical axis has a pull down menu that's enabled with a right hand click. Options include adding wave parameters in addition to changing the scale. Elements like valid Doppler bins can be viewed along with wave height standard deviation. When you're ready to export to PDF or PNG, go to File, Save Graph Image. Codar's call sign tool enables each CSOND to send a unique identifier signal in a format compliant with ITU requirements. Codar has designed its patent pending call sign method with an interpolation scheme that allows continuous signal processing, even during call sign transmission so that it won't affect routine ocean measurements or interfere with neighboring CSOND performance. To activate the CSOND call sign, open CSOND radial site setup and click on the call sign tab. Enter the call sign transmission designation and scheduling parameters. The signal can be scheduled for recurring transmission at a user selected interval. Most likely many will be set for 20 minutes. We recommend staggering call sign transmissions from neighboring CSONs one or two minutes apart to avoid overlapping signals. We also suggest avoiding the on the hour mark so as not to conflict with other signals made precisely on the hour. In addition to data processing, data access, and data viewing enhancements, CSON Radial Suite Release 8 has improved functionality and flexibility. New keyhole markup language file tools have been added for compatibility with Google Earth. Archivalist allows users to specify archiving options to optimize disk space. Radial Web Server has improved stability, remote computers restart, and display of radial distributions and statistics and real-time wave parameters. A new backup configs command line tool runs automatically at system startup if changes have been made to system configs, such as an updated antenna pattern. The date stamped files that are created with these changes will make reconstructing the history of your antenna configurations much easier. Overall, data quality has been improved by radial processing tools, including wave and spectra processing. Improved system security with code signed applications per Mac OS 10.12 requirements has also been added to release 8. 
more details on all of the materials presented in this video and information on many more features can be found in the user guides and in other documentation found in CSOND docs and also on support.codar.com.